Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Okay, so when the Federal Reserve uses monetary policy to help stabilize the economy, its primary goal is to initiate changes in investment spending by firms, which will directly impact aggregate demand. The Fed will attempt to manipulate the money supply with appropriate monetary policy, which, in certain economic conditions, can make it more or less advantageous for firms to take out loans and help drive the economy back to full employment. However, these monetary policies also set off a chain reaction that impacts every economic participant and all economic indicators across the aggregate economy. Let's investigate the effects of monetary policy and how monetary policy works, and let's start by taking a closer look at investment spending. Investment spending can be investigated further through a concept known as investment demand. Investment demand is defined as the desired quantity of investment spending by firms across the economy on fiscal capital and other resources for the purpose of future productivity and profitability. In other words, it's the amount that firms are willing and able to spend on land, labor, capital, and economic goods at various nominal interest rates. This is the investment demand curve. Notice that it's a downward sloping curve, implying that the relationship between nominal interest rates and the quantity of investment demanded is inverse. This means that as nominal interest rates rise in the aggregate economy, firms are less willing or less able to take out the same quantity of loans and reinvest in themselves and therefore take out fewer loans and invest less. As nominal interest rates fall in the aggregate economy, firms are more willing or more able to take out the same quantity of loans and reinvest in themselves, and therefore take out more loans and invest more. So, if the Fed wants to stimulate investment spending to help revitalize aggregate demand in order to stabilize the economy, it needs to use monetary policy that will cause the nominal interest rates to fall in the money market. This should act as a catalyst for greater investment spending in the aggregate economy. Firms that were either unwilling or unable to take out loans now have an incentive to take advantage of a lower interest rate to borrow from banks. By contrast, if the Fed wants to reduce investment spending to help restrain aggregate demand in order to stabilize the economy, it needs to use monetary policy that will cause the nominal interest rates to rise in the money market. This should act as a deterrent and cause less investment spending in the aggregate economy. Firms will become either unwilling or unable to take out loans and now have an incentive to avoid higher interest rates to borrow from banks. As a result, when the economy is in a recessionary gap, the Federal Reserve will implement expansionary or easy monetary policy to stimulate aggregate demand. The Fed has four policy options, decrease the discount rate, decrease the reserve ratio, buy bonds in the open market, or decrease the federal funds rate. When the Federal Reserve uses any of these four easy monetary policy options, it increases reserves and loanable funds, which increases the money supply in the economy. Because there's a greater supply of money available in the money market, the nominal interest rate in the money market decreases, meaning loans are now less expensive for firms. As the nominal interest rate falls, firms are now more willing and able to borrow money because it is cheaper now that interest rates are lower. As a result, Firms take out greater quantities of loans and reinvest in themselves, leading to an increase in investment spending by firms across the economy. The increase in investment spending stimulates aggregate demand and signals to firms across the economy that they need to increase the quantity of products they supply to meet higher demand. In order to boost output production, firms will acquire more labor, and so new jobs are generated and unemployed workers find work. As more workers are hired and earn a wage for their labor, income levels rise, leading to a wave of new spending in the aggregate economy. With rising income levels, consumer spending increases, driving aggregate demand to higher levels. In the end, the initial expansionary monetary policy increased the money supply and drove down nominal interest rates, which increased investment spending and boosted aggregate demand. This slashed the unemployment rate to 4-6%, to increased the standard of living, and returned the economy to its full employment level of real GDP output. When the economy is in an inflationary gap, the Federal Reserve will implement contractionary or tight monetary policy to reduce aggregate demand. The Fed has four policy options, increase the discount rate, increase the reserve ratio, sell bonds in the open market, or increase the federal funds rate. 
When the Federal Reserve uses any of these four tight monetary policy options, it decreases bank reserves and loanable funds, which decreases the money supply in the economy. Because there's a lesser supply of money available in the money market, the nominal interest rate in the money market increases, meaning loans are now more expensive for firms. As the nominal interest rate rises, firms are either less willing or less able to borrow money because it is more expensive now that interest rates are higher. As a result, firms take out a lesser quantity of loans and reinvest less in themselves, leading to a decrease in investment spending by firms across the economy. The decrease in investment spending reduces aggregate demand and signals to firms across the economy that they need to decrease the quantity of products that they supply to adjust for a lower demand. In order to scale back output production, firms will eliminate jobs and some workers become unemployed. With less workers earning a wage for their labor, income levels fall, leading to a wave of decreased spending in the aggregate economy. With falling income levels, consumer spending decreases, driving aggregate demand to lower levels. In the end, the initial contractionary monetary policy decreased the money supply and drove up nominal interest rates, which decreased investment spending and reduced aggregate demand. This drove down excessive inflation, brought the unemployment rate back down to 4-6%, to and returned the economy to its full employment level of real GDP output. And that's the effects of monetary policy. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on banks and money creation, or you can click here for my video on bank balance sheets. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.